on, put your hands together. Oh, I know you can do better than that. Put your hands together. If you truly believe God will and is working it out, put your hands together. You don't look to me like people who believe it. I said if you truly believe it, that God will work it out and God is working it out. Put your hands together. appreciate the art of worship please give me a little on the monitor like I need to hear myself I like when I speak and my head is about to blow off <laughs> thank you so much for that hallelujah church if you don't know something about me number one thing you have to know is I like noise hallelujah church I always like to be where people are alive and they are breathing if you want to kill me just put me in a cemetery because everybody there is dead hallelujah church yeah i just want to know you are here let me hear the people online Halle okay i can't see them hallelujah church <laughs> wow 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 so good to be here again i think it's been three years now <laughs> are you ready to be stretched they gave me this I don't know this difficult job of making me to stretch you. And then I sat down, I realized you're not a rubber band. I said, God, you have to help me with this because I don't know how to accomplish this without you. But well, thank you so much, so much for having me. You can have your seat. I want to appreciate Pastor Abby and Pastor Emmanuel. Thank you so much for having me. Always, always a great pleasure you know, to be here and to celebrate with the people of God. I always tell people if you have children, it's very, very important that you know who you leave them with and who you allow to watch them. Because people are crazy. We live in a crazy, crazy time. So it takes great courage. It takes great trust for you to call somebody that come and speak to my people. I don't take it for granted, so I appreciate it. And I know God will help me to make good use of it. If you want to clap, you don't have to pay for it. Please appreciate Pastor Avi and Pastor Imani. I also want to thank the Excel people. You know, I know what goes into inviting somebody. You're sitting down, we should we call, should we call this, should we call that? No, let's do this. No, I don't think I like that guy. I don't think he's coming back. The last time he was here, it didn't look good. <laughs> So believe me, if anybody call you back, that means you are not the best, but that means you are trying. That's just how we wanted you to know. So I thank the Excel people for seeing it worthy for me to come back. And I hope by the time I'm done today, they will still want me to come back. Yeah, yeah I mean, you can say amen, but I just have to do a good job. <laughs> That's all I know. And I thank you for coming. Thank you for not making this place so empty that we don't have anybody to talk to. Even Jesus has to gather 12 people. When the other people are not listening, we will call the 12. The Bible says they will go onto a mountain. At least he has somebody to talk to. Right from Peter, James, and John. And he keep adding to the number. After a while, he lost somebody. But at least there is still 11 to talk to. So please help me appreciate somebody by your side. Please tell them, I'm so glad that you are here today. Um, ju just tell them. And by the way, if they look good, please tell them also. You know? 
And if you are sitting beside your wife or your husband, nobody has to tell you that. For safety, you have to say that. <laughs> when they ask you, do I look good? You don't have any other choice. You're the best thing I've ever seen today. <laughs> All right. Matthew chapter 12. That's good. They told me I have 40 minutes. And if you know anything about speaking, we don't always look at the time. So they have to stop us. Matthew chapter 12. I'm going to read from verse 9. I hope you are expecting this morning. I just want to be sure. Going on from there, from that place, the Bible says Jesus went into their synagogue. Just as you have come this morning. I mean, this is a church. It's not a synagogue. It's almost the same thing. And a man was there whose hand was withered. Please, I want you to notice the context. I want you to notice the place. I want you to notice the people because they are all very important. The location is church. Right there in church. I don't know how long this guy has been coming to church. I don't know how long he's been there. We weren't told if he's a minister. We weren't told if he's a deacon. We weren't told the department where he was. But he was in church. But he has a withered hand. Looking for a reason to bring charges against Jesus, they asked him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? You know the context. Sabbath is very important. Because I can guarantee you the reason why so many of you are not productive is because of the Sabbath. Because you respected the Sabbath so much, more than the God of the Sabbath. He said to them in verse 11, if any of you has a sheep and it falls into the pit and it's on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a person than a sheep. Underline that word, valuable. Verse 13, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. So, he stretched it out, and it was completely restored, healthy, and just as sound. Please, I want you to, <laughs> I want you to underline the last thing on that screen. Healthy as the other end. And I'm going to finish with the other end. Because that means if you have one hand that is withered, the only reason you know is withered is because you have the other end. There is already something to measure it with. And Jesus knew. Everybody else knew. The man knew this hand was withered. Because God will always make sure that there is the other hand just for you to know that this is withered. But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. I'm going to talk about them too. Hopefully I have time. But let's pray. Father, I want to thank you because you are a great God. You have always been. Father, thank you because it said the word became flesh and we beheld his glory as of the glory of the only begotten, always full of grace and truth. Father, you have put too much in us. <laughs> Father, you have endowed us with too much. Father, and we have come. Just like you told this man. You didn't perform any miracle. You just told the man, if you can stretch it, you will see that it can be healthy and it can be normal. Like the other end. Father, God, take me out of the way so that you can have the right of way. Father, I have prepared, but better, I want you to prepare me. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that the words of my mouth, and the meditation of my heart 
will be what is acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, we are afraid. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right. So one of the most challenging times of my life was during COVID. How many of you were here during COVID? Believe me, if you are sitting down here, I know you are here during COVID. <laughs> so while I was grateful that I survived, like many of you, you know, who got infected, got the vaccine, took the booster, and in addition to that, took all the ginger, the garlic, the leptin, the turmeric, the pineapple mixtures. Eventually, we thank God, we became COVID-free. We went back to our normal life and became, that time became very, very challenging. Because before then, in October 2019, I lost my job. I was with three kids. And I didn't get another one. I lost my job just before COVID, and then there was no job. With bills to pay, three kids to feed, I knew this was going to be a very, very stretchy time. Business was shut down. I mean, if you know anything about my business, I do speaking, coaching, personal development, leadership development. Basically, nobody can gather anywhere. So we couldn't do anything. And then on top of that, because money was scarce, I had to move out of the house because I couldn't pay. Stayed a few weeks at the hotel while I had my stuff in the storage. I moved out of the hotel, got to an apartment. Times were tough, things were rough, and money was not enough. After my contract was terminated, I had a conversation with myself. I knew I had to do something, and I had to do it fast. I knew there were jobs in the job market, but the challenge is I knew that I wasn't qualified for them. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're a man, you have kids, you're married, you know, even if you don't know, I don't know who you pay mortgage to, Wells Fargo will remind you. <laughs> they will let you know that there is fire on the mountain. <laughs> so I, after I surveyed all the job postings, I spoke to a very good friend, you know, a few of them, I identified where the opportunities are. And then I decided to go back and pursue a few certifications. Hmm. I remember the first certification I took. You know, the, you know, it's been a while before I studied anything because I was so busy building a business. <laughs> I wore a suit. <laughs> I got to the certification place. First time ever. And then they said I have two minutes to answer each question. The first question, I think it took me like five minutes. After a while, the screen disappeared. I look at it, and I don't even know what to do. <laughs> I knew that this was going to be rough. So when I finished, immediately they showed my result. Failed. I said, well, expected. <laughs> I didn't even argue. After about two months, they said, you know, you have to put in more work. It's show me the areas where I need to improve on. So an additional two months, I studied, went back, did the exam, failed again. Uh, I started thinking and asking God, is this really for me? You know, so after a while, spoke with another friend. They said I can go into another field. I just knew I had to do something. Now, you have to understand, this is not, uh, I saw a vision, I pray to God, should I do this? No, there are things to take care of, and I just have to do something. So, I prepared, I remember a particular interview, you know. So, long story short, I did get my certification, by the way. I got two of them in the space of six months. And I remember the first interview, and I'm always a big shot. I want to shoot for the top five companies in the US. You know, they call them the big five. So the interview took about, this interview was a whole day. It was six hours of interview. And the preparation took me about a month. So I sat down at the interview. The guy, I, I mean, I, thought, I think I spoke to like six people, six different people, about one, one hour. So, after a while, all of them came together, and there's this one guy there. The guy looked at me. He said, you know, you have a very, very impressive background, impressive profile. And he asked me, he said, did you actually do this project? I said, I did. 
And the guy said, I wasn't just convinced. Mm. I said, okay. So I don't know what to do if you're not convinced. After a week, they came back. They said they had to go with the other candidate. They were very sorry. I said, okay, no problem, no big. I keep pushing. After having the pity party with myself, I decided I would study again. So I registered for school. I started school. So I got somebody who was like a guru in the subject. And I told him I started studying again. He agreed to be kind of an official tutor. Answer questions. I sent this guy messages. He answered me. You know, so long story short, eventually, this same guy told me, that Brasaji, I say, huh? now by the way, this is a very young guy, older than him. You know, he said there's a position at the company. I said, what's the position about? He told me, you have to have this, you have to have this, you have to have this. I said, you know, you already know. I don't have any of that. <laughs> I don't have any of that. That's just, just the truth. He said, okay, uh, one thing I'm going to advise is, can you just use the interview as a practice? I said, okay, no problem. So he told me what they were going to be, you know, he's focused on security. I said, okay, no problem. And don't forget I failed all the security stuff. I didn't even want to see them again. So eventually he submitted my name. They scheduled the interview. I studied from 6 p.m. on Wednesday to 7 a.m. on Thursday. Don't let that fly over your head. <laughs> 10 a.m. was the interview. I sat there like a guru. <laughs> and then they asked all the questions, I answered it. Now, don't forget, I don't know how to do jack. I was just, everything I've read, they are asking, I was answering the question. <laughs> Long story short, I got my first job. Clap, if you want to clap, it's a big deal. <laughs> so I got the job. And then I called the guy. I said, you know, I want to really thank you so much for your effort, for guiding me, for doing everything. But what am I going to do? He said, the exact thing that I've been doing. I have to keep stretching myself. He said, because certification is different from job. When you get to the job, people want things done. They, don't, they just want things done. Because now you said everything in the interview. Now it's time to prove <laughs> everything. I know people like me are here. <laughs> so what is the point? The good story, but what is the point? The point is everything you want is outside of where you are right now. Everything you want. And you have to stretch yourself to get it. You have to grow yourself to get it. And you have to go by yourself to get it. I might not know much about you. I might not know you. But this is what I know about you. You are created to succeed because you have the seed of God in you. You are full of potential. You know how I know? Because God deposited it in you. You are made for more because you are created in God's image. That to reach that potential and be all God has created you to be, there is something you must do. Please give me Acts 16, Acts 16, 30. And any time I am in church, you know, this year alone, if you come on Sundays, this year alone, you are going to hear 52 messages. If you come every Sunday. That is besides Bible study. That is besides you come for VG. That is besides special program. 30 verse 30. So this is after Peter, you know, has preached to the guy. Paul and Silas at midnight. And then eventually, when the jailer, the Bible says, when he discovered that Paul and Silas, they are out of the prison. And he wants to kill himself, the Bible says. And Paul said, we are all here. Don't kill yourself. Then he said, after he brought them out of the inner prison, and he says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? The problem I've seen with Christianity and church people is that we know too much about what God is going to do. But what we don't know is about what we are going to do. So this is a question I want you to ask yourself for the things, that very thing that you want. What is it that you are going to do? We already know God created the universe, is the omnipresent, is the omnipotent. But what are you going to do? You want to make more money? You want to start your own business? 
You want to grow your business. You want to get more customers. You want to look more beautiful or more handsome. You want to lose more weight. You want to communicate better. You want to get promoted. You want to write a book. You want to go back to school. You want to get deeper in your spiritual life. You want to grow your ministry. You want to get more time, get more done, whatever it is. Please believe me when I tell you there is something that you have to do. And you have to find it out. And you have to figure it out. And after you say amen, hallelujah on Sunday, you have to get out on Monday to say, you know what? This is what I have to do. Let me tell you what is going to happen by the time you start doing those things. It will take some money from you. There is somebody I have as a mentor. The first program took $8,000. One of my friends called me, says, please, what is he telling you? I want to know. <laughs> After the $8,000, it's another $5,000. What? You're going to give that guy all that money? And the answer is yes. You know why? Because I see somebody who is doing what I am doing at another level. And I believe so much in myself that I can do the same thing. So I put the investment in me. After all, you put your money in crypto. You don't have to tell me I did the same thing. And you are expecting Shiba Inu to go up, 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 up. And you wake up like me, the first thing is you check the graph. And the thing is going down and you can't help it. So you believe so much in that you put your money there. How about you? That is why I ask you to underline valuable. Have you seen yourself so valuable that I'm going to invest in me? Clap if you want to clap. Always. So it's going to take some money from you. It's going to take some time from you. It's going to cut Netflix times by 75%. I don't know what series you are watching now. I'm watching one too. <laughs> and they did it so good. They will end the series at a time you want to see what is next. But once you start stretching yourself, that time will be cut by 75%. It's going to reduce the time you spend on the phone with your friends, talking about things that will not move the middle of your life forward. It might cause you to be lonely sometimes. Yes, it might be painful. You might have to change your friends. You might have to move from your family house. You might have to move from where you are. But believe me, it's going to cost something. It's going to cost something. But after all is said and done, like a gold that has went through the fire, you will come out refined. You will come out shiny. You will come out polished. And you will come out very, very valuable. Put your hands together if you believe that about yourself. So the end was withered. And this guy was in church. When something is with it, that means it's dried. It's there. So this is not a case of someone who is disabled. No. The hand is there. It's just not functioning. There is no blood flowing through it. There is no moisture going through it. The man was in church. But because you are in church does not make everything all right. You need someone to challenge you and stretch you. Before you can break through. And I hope I can say something today. But please, somebody says, don't believe everything I say. And I want to tell you, please, don't believe everything I say. Why did I say that? Sometimes the only time you believe some things is when it happens to you. Because every other person telling you is a story. When I was first sitting for my first certification, I have, eight, I think, 830 past questions to go through. The first week, I went through like 50. I said, this is not going to work. So you have to read the past questions, and you have to read what a lot of people said about what the answer possibly was. And then you have to go to resources to check for yourself if those things were true. So after doing like 100 questions, I want to pass out already. And then I joined this forum. You know, 
for the people who are doing the same sort of certification, if you, are, or if, you are, if you know about Quora and all this forum. And then I read about a guy. The guy just passed. I said, my God, I wish this is going to be my story one day. And then the guy said, I practice 1,300 questions. I said, what? <laughs> I didn't know the rest of the thing the guy said. That was my motivation. So if this guy can do 1,300, I can sure do 800. So I went back. Every little time I get, review and review and review and review past questions. And sometimes that is just what you have to do. You know, some of, okay, let me just say it. Some of, my, some of your friends are not really helping you. And that's why you have to break out and break through to the people who are already doing what you want to do. It's going to stretch you. It's going to help you. So, let's go through this. Do you know what the Bible says in Ephesians 1.3? He said, blessed be God who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So, for the first thing I want you to know about yourself is that you are loaded. God has blessed you with every blessing you can ever think of that you will ever need. Genesis 1.26, what did he say? And God created man in his image and in his own likeness. What did God say? Let them have what? Let them have what? Oh my God, I wish I had a church. Let them have what? So tell yourself, I already have dominion. Ephesians 4, 8. The Bible says the one that ascended is the same one that descended. And after what, he did what? He gave gifts to men. So please tell yourself, I am gifted. I am gifted. 1 Corinthians 2.9, the Bible says, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and it has not been in the heart of any man what God has prepared for those who love him and those who are called according to his purpose. That tells me that you have abilities that you have not used yet. You have giftings that you have not exercised yet. You have creativities that you have not unleashed yet. And like a brand new battery, you have powers that you have never plugged anywhere yet. Ephesians 3.20 said to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ever ask and all that we could ever imagine according to the power that is working in us. So there is a power that is working in you. So the question is, have you ever tried to even tap into this power? Have you ever asked yourself, what is this power that is at work in me? 2 Corinthians 4, 7. I like this one. How many of you have, have ever hunted for a treasure? You've ever hunted for a treasure, you just want something, and you went through the jungle to get it. Maybe, we, maybe it's just only in fairy tales. The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. So right inside of you, there is a treasure. And my work today is to get you on this exploratory journey. To make you know that what it is that you can do to bring out everything that has been deposited in you. To do everything God has created you and everything God has wired you to do. Uh, where's that brother that is helping me? Yeah, please, you can bring it. So what I want you to do is, I want you to get, uh, okay, I just want you to get in three groups. In three groups. Look for somebody. Just make sure you are three. So what I want you to do is, I need somebody to volunteer as, uh, as my measuring person. So they are going to give you some rubber bands. So I think two of you or three of you, maybe two, maybe not everybody. So if you can do two. So give them the rubber bands. So what I want you to do is, those rubber bands are three and a half, I think three and a half inches, if I'm right. Two, two each. Okay, let's do two, two each. I don't know if the rubber band is going to be done. No, two. Let's do two. But I want somebody to be able to measure. Because I just want to quickly show you something. Because if you are ever going to stretch yourself, this is, I want you to learn this lesson about the rubber band. So while they are doing that, 
Please put me in Judges. Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. I'm going to read verse 12 to 14. So I want you to believe so much in yourself. Just groups of two. The Bible says the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Another translation says you mighty man of power. Another translation says you mighty hero. The Lord will see too. Verse 13. So Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? If the Lord is with me, why did I lose my job? If the Lord is with me, why did I get divorced? If the Lord is with me, why is my family like this? If the Lord is with me, why is it that there is nobody that can even boast for a million dollars in our family? If truly you are telling me that the Lord is with me. And where are all of the miracles our ancestors told us about? And if we're not very careful, the Bible is soon going to become a storybook. It's going to become a fable. Why? Because we don't see everything that we're reading there in our lives. So he said, the Lord brought us. Didn't they say the Lord brought us out of Egypt? But now, what I think and what I'm seeing is that the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. And that was a complaint. But the Bible says the Lord turned to Gideon and said, go with this strength that you have. Because the person that is asking the question is actually the person that can solve it. But there is something in Gideon that God knows that you can do this instead of you asking me to do it. And let me tell you, Gideon, the reason everything you are complaining about is because you have never done anything about it. It's because you have never done anything about it. He says, so the strength is in you. So go in that strength and go and deliver your people and go and make it happen. So that's why I say you have to believe in yourself before you can stretch yourself. You have to believe that you can pass the certification. You have to believe that you too can get a job that is paying people $400,000. You know, when I was looking for a job, <laughs> I look at the job site. And then, I don't know how many people, are, I know there are IT people here. There are people called SREs, a site reliability engineer. I thought they were real estate because then I was doing real estate too. I didn't know it was all real estate. <laughs> and then some of them are making 700000 And then immediately I want to know what are they doing. I really want to know what they are doing. That somebody is going to give them that kind of money. Anybody know what is raining right now? Anybody? Thank you. Chat what? Chat GBT. Go to openai.com and go and look at the positions. $400,000, $500,000. They will give the money to you. But the question is, do you know anything about what is supposed to be done? So everything you are complaining about, blaming God for, praying to God for, God says is already in you. You have the strength in you. If only you can go out and do something about it. Another person that complained, they don't believe in themselves. Exodus 4, verse 10 to 12. <laughs> Moses, after God told Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh, he said, forget it. Exodus 4, 10 to 12. Moses complained about everything that you can ever think of. Send somebody. I'm a stutterer. I'm a stammerer. I can't talk very well. I can't do this. I can't do that. And God said, all I need you to do is to just go. I've never asked you to do anything else. Just go to Pharaoh. I am the one who made the mouth. And I can make it speak. I can make it talk. Just go. 
Do you have the rubber band to to everybody? Okay. So I don't know if you're going to do it sitting down. So I want, I, I want you and your partner, I want you to stretch that rubber band. And please, if you are the one measuring, you can just measure and write something down. Stretch rubber. So the rubber band, I already told you the size already. So get something to write, please. I want them to stretch it and I want you to measure it. Get a partner, get a partner. Don't worry, everybody took a shower this morning. They smell so good. They smell so nice. Stretch the rubber band and please take the, me take the measurement. Who has the tape? No, someone had the tape. Okay, thank you. Just help me measure it. It doesn't matter. Just measure whatever they stretch. Just approximate. Sometimes you can even gauge it. One inches, two inches. Or if you have, I know there, if you have something I can measure, you can just tell them what your measurement is. Let's do it real quick. We might not get to everybody. Did you already write it down? Oh my, I can't believe this is the time. <laughs> All right, let's just continue. Let me see, what do we have? Did anybody write it down? We have 14, we have what? Sorry? 19, we have what? We have 22. 22, they are the best. <laughs> 22. Well, I think you won, but some, some people are challenging it. Okay, time is going. Okay, if, you're, if, you're, if you and your partner are above, if you're above 18, please stand up. If your measurement is above 18, stand up. Okay, above 18, stand up, please. Above 18, please measure it, measure it. Okay, if you're above, if you, are, if you are 20 and below, please sit down. 20 and below, sit down. Okay. What do you have? Oh, you didn't stretch. What do you have? 23. Okay, can so they have 23. So you can see that. Can both of you please come? Please both of you come if you don't mind. I think both of you have muscles. That's why you stretch 23. <laughs> can you come please come on stage? Now I want to tell you something. Now the first question is why are the measurements different? Thank you. The level of your stretch. Okay. This is what I want you to do. Sorry. So I want you to hold the rubber band and hold it the other way. I want you to stretch it again. Where is the measurement? Can you bring the tape, please? So I want you to continue to stretch it. Did you give us a fake number? I hope you guys are not the people that are counting this thing. Though. <laughs> stretch it now. Just continue to stretch it. Please measure it. What is that? Continue to stretch it. Your fingers up. Twenty-two. Okay. All right. It's twenty-two. So what?
You see what I want to prove to you? <laughs> I heard somebody say, as you stretch it, it was what? It was hurting. So, the problem, now, this is three and a half inches if you don't stretch it at all. But this rubber band can go up to 24. But it's going to take a lot from you. And if you want it to remain stretched, you have to keep it that way. So, this is one thing I know about you and your potential. It's right there. Dormant. It's never going to do anything until you begin to stretch it. So this is one thing I want you to go out with today. That any area of your life that you want to see increase. You want to see God's blessing. This is what I want you to do. Because God has given you the rubber band. And the stretching is going to be up to you. So, any area you want to see, I want you to go out from today and say, I am going to start stretching myself. And the first place to start, ladies and gentlemen, is your mind. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, it says, guard your heart with all diligence because everything you do flows from it. Believe me, the income you are making right now is that is where your mind tells you that you can make. In the same company, some people are making $15 an hour minimum wage. In the same company, the people are making a million. The same company. And this is one thing I want you to know about career. That is not how much they can pay. But that is how much they can pay you. Because that is what you demanded. When I was doing my interview, I read about negotiation. We went back and forth a lot, a lot of times. You want the job, they want you. You have already settled the fact that you are the most qualified for the job. There is a reason they are calling you for the second and the third interview. It's because you can do this. But now you have to demand. And you don't have to be scared about it. So you have to start from your mind. The Bible says everything flows from it. Do we have any software developer here? Anybody that writes codes? Anybody? Okay. Now if you know anything about code writing, when you write the code, it's called a program. And please listen to this. You can change your life forever. It's called a program. So when you write the code, after that you compile the code. You now run it. That code is not going to do anything else apart from whatever you have put in the program. Now, that programming is what leads to your thoughts. It's what leads to what you are thinking. So what is programming for us as humans where we grew up? What we heard our parents say? What you turn on the TV to listen to? What your friends tell you? Now you can deceive yourself as much as you want that you're not going to think about it. There are some songs I can sing right now because my dad, Saturday morning, we play Sunday Day Live. Live music. We wake up every Saturday to hear the same thing. Now, at about 30 years later, I can recite it for you. That is what the mind is. If you don't understand that, I want you to understand the folders and the file on your laptop, on your computer. See your mind that way. That every time when you listen to information, you talk to people, you watch TV, you listen to program, you read the book. All you are doing is you are filing information in the cabinet of your mind. So when the time comes to retrieve information, you go back to the laptop. What do you do if you don't know where it is? You search for it. Now, if it is there, it's going to come out. If it is not there, it's going to tell you there is nothing there. 
And unfortunately, some of us have been brainwashed to think you are going to retrieve something that you have never saved. <laughs> so the reason why God told Gideon is that you are a man of strength is because he puts it there. The reason why God called Moses is because Moses, even before God called him, started killing people in Egypt because the deliverer is just in this guy. So God has to remind him, what I'm trying to pull out of you is the thing I have put there. I was the one who put it there. When God created man, God packaged man so much with a lot. And he said it is not good for man to be a loan. Two words. It's not about loneliness. It's like this guy is so packaged. If I need a woman, I'm going to pull it out of him. And the Bible says God pulled out the woman from the man and brought it from the man. How did you know Adam know that he was packaged? When Adam saw it, he said, this one is the bone of my bones because I can see it was taken out of me. And the reason most times why you don't have it is because nobody has ever tried it to pull it out of you. And sometimes you fight the people that want to try to pull it out of you. You know why? Because they can see it. They know you can do more. They know you have made for more. And that is why they are trying to pull it out of you. So if you want to change the results you are getting, you have to change the actions you are taking. Please, let me tell you something. Everything you are doing now, you will not get any other result until you start doing something else. Newton's first law of motion. A body will continue in its state until it is acted upon by an external force. Your income will not change until they can give you that 2,000 per year thing in which Joe Biden is going to take another 30% out of it. Your income will not change until you decide to do something else. So to stretch yourself, this is what I want you to do. Can I? How many minutes do I have? I know time is gone. Okay. Can you come, Mr. Sonny? Can you please bring the guitar? This is the second thing I want to show you. Oh, I don't know if you can do it from there. Can you still bring it there and still play? Please listen to this. If you are not a musician, let me quickly explain to you. Can you come? Uh, you are the star today. I want everybody to see you. <laughs> Please put your hands together for Sonny. Now, let's just do a little bit of it. You don't have to pay for this. <laughs> now, what do you call this? This is the tuning peg. What is this? That's the strings. What is that thing that the string is attached to back there? That's the ramp. So what I want him to do, please listen to this. It's going to change your life. I don't want you to forget this. That's why I want you to do this. Can you play something? Play anything on this guitar. I've taken permission from him. Just continue to play. That is all the blood of Jesus. Can you sing it? Oh, the blood. Can you sing it? Oh, gee. Continue to sing. Please sing very loud. more time, please, George. Hold the blood. Continue to sing. You are getting distracted. Continue to play. All right. You can shut it up. Now. Oh, you can stop it. You can stop it. What did I do, anybody? I tune it off. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So I tune it off. When I start tuning it off, what happened? <laughs> oh my God, I'm so sorry about that. 
I started tuning it off. I started loosening the tuning peg. And the string started getting loose. And all of a sudden, the guitar that was making a very good sound, all of a sudden cannot make anything again. I want you to please learn this about your life. From the ramp, that thing at the bottom, to the tuning peg, the string is there. Those are the two things holding the string together. And what is producing that sound, listen to this, is what is called tension. And most of you don't like tension. And you don't like uncertainty. And you don't like to be stretched. And you don't like to be held tight like that. Yeah, please believe me when I tell you, if you're ever going to reach your potential, if you're ever going to do something with your life, if you are ever going to do more and bring out everything that God has created in you, you have to constantly be under that kind of tension. Because that is when God can play you. That is when you can make a better sound. That is when you can make a better income. So this is what I want you to do as you go out in this Excel Sunday. I want you to go and look for a tension that you are going to put yourself under. I say, God, I've always wanted to be a real estate mogul. I want you to start reading about real estate. I want you to start learning about real estate. I say, God, I've always wanted to speak. I want you to go into the tension of investing now, not in clothes and shoes, and start buying books, and start learning how to communicate. I want you to go back to your job and go to your supervisor. What else can I do? I am tired of what I'm doing. I've been doing it for the past four years. Now it's time for me to do something else. And if you do that, any time. Now, Sonny, how long does the tuning peg have to stay tuned? And then you have to do what? You have to start tuning it again. And that is some of you, that is what you have to do. God has packaged you. God has blessed you. God has gifted you. God has raised you. But believe me, like Gideon, you are the only person that can do something about it. So please, I want you to put yourself under that tension and know that God, I am ready. Because once you are between that ramp and the tuning peg, yes, it's going to be stretchy. It's going to be tough. It's going to be painful. Then believe me, 